Hello my lovelies, it's Azena, and today I want to show you how to solve this puzzle. A farmer loves prime numbers and is absolutely thrilled when he notices, while counting his animals, that the numbers of his horses, cows and pigs are three different prime numbers. He also observes that the number of cows multiplied by the sum of the number of cows and the number of horses is 120 greater than the number of pigs. Find out how many horses, cows and pigs the farmer has. Okay, let's see how we can solve this. This is about prime numbers, so maybe we take a look at the prime numbers first. The smallest prime number is the 2, which is also the only even prime number. All the other prime numbers, like 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on, these prime numbers are all odd. So there is only one even prime number, and that is the 2. Okay, we get another information from the text. Um, he says that the number of cows multiplied by... Okay, so the number of cows, we call it C. This is our number of cows. And if we multiply this now by the sum of... Okay, so we multiplied by a sum of the number of cows cows and the number of horses. So we have the sum of the number of cows and the number of horses, which I call h, is, so this number is 120 greater than the number of pigs. So if we just take the number of pigs, which we can call p, we have to add the 120 here because this number is 120 greater than just the number of the pigs. This is just one equation with three unknowns. <laughs> we only know that we work with prime numbers here and that all three numbers for p, h and c are different prime numbers. Okay, where shall we start then? Uh, I mean, on the left side, we have C and H as unknowns. On the right side, we only have the P. So maybe we start with the P and we could check whether P is going to be the only even prime number. So we could check is P two and either we find out yes, then great, then we find that he has two pigs, or we will find out that no, this number doesn't work, but then we know that p has to be an odd number because all of the other prime numbers are odd. So let's check if we have an even number in here or not. So let's take our equation, insert 2 for our p. So instead of the p, we write a 2 and let's see if this works. 2 plus 120 equals 122. So this is what we have on the right side now. And if we compare the two sides, we have a product here of a prime number and another number. And here we can write this number as a product as well. Um, 122 can be written as 2 times 61. And fortunately, both of these numbers are prime numbers. So this is the prime factorization. 2 is a prime number and 61 is a big one, but it is a prime number as well. So I can compare these two sides now because this is the only product I can find for the 122 using prime numbers. I mean, okay, I can also change the order. So I can also say it's 61 times 2. So we have to check both possibilities. But this is it. So either I have 2 times 61 here or the other way around, 61 times 2. So let's compare. Either my C is going to be 
two, which is not possible because my p is already two and the prime numbers have to be different. So this combination doesn't work. And the other way around, maybe my c is 61 is a prime number, is possible. But then what we have in these parentheses needs to be two. So if my C is already 61 and age is a prime number, so a positive number, and I add to the 61 a positive number, this cannot be equal to two. So this possibility is also not working. So we just found out P cannot be equal to two. So we know now that my P cannot be even. P has to be one of the other infinitely many uh, prime numbers that are odd. Okay, so P has to be odd. What does that mean for my right side here when I add an odd number to an even number? Well, let's see, if I have an even number and add it to an even number, then I get an even number again, right? If I have an even number and add it to an odd number, then I get an odd result. And maybe the third case as well, if I add two odd numbers, then I get an even number again. So these are the cases that can happen with even and odd numbers if I add them. We are in the case odd plus even, so this one here, so we know we will get an odd result. An odd result on the right side means that we also have an odd result on the left side because both sides has to be equal. But here we have a product. When is a product going to be odd? Let's take a look at the cases. If we have an even number and multiply it by an even number, we will get an even number again. It's something like 2 times 4 gives us an even number. If we had an odd number and multiplied by an odd number, we will get an odd result. Something like 7 times 5 gives us an odd result. And then the third case, even times odd, gives us an even number again, because this even number makes everything <laughs> even again. So the only case where we get an odd result is if both numbers are odd themselves. So for our case here, this means that our C has to be an odd number and our second number here has to be an odd number as well, so that we have odd times odd equals an odd result. Okay, so when is this sum odd? Well, only in this case if we have an even number and add it to an odd number. We already know that C is an odd number, so H has to be even. There is only one even prime number. So we now know that H, if it's going to be an even prime number, has to be equal to 2. So we found the value for H. I inserted it here. And now we only have C and P in here. Um, maybe we get rid of the parentheses now on the left side and simplify the equation a little bit. So let's multiply C times C equals C squared. C times 2 equals 2C. On the other side we have the P plus 120. Uh, maybe let's bring the 120 to the other side as well by subtracting it on both sides of the equation so that we get c squared plus 2c minus 120 equals just p because this cancels out. Okay, now on the left side we have this quadratic form, c squared plus 2c minus 120. We can write this as a product and then it's easier to compare these two sides. So I want to factorize the left side so that I have equals p here. Because we have c squared here, we know that c goes here and here. 
And then I have to look for two numbers that I'm going to add A here and I'm going to add B here. These are the two numbers we have to find now. And I know about these two numbers that if I add them, so A plus B, then I get this number in front of my C as a result. So I get two as a result. And if I multiply these two numbers, so A times B, then I get this number here that is all by itself as a result, so the negative 120. Okay, there are some possibilities to multiply two numbers to get one uh, negative 120, but one possibility, for example, is negative 10 times 12. So this would result in this here, and we always have to check if we add these two numbers, so negative 10 plus 12, if we get 2 as a result. And yes, fortunately, these numbers are great. So I have negative 10 here as my first number and 12 as my second number, positive 12, so that I found this product now of my left side. And this is what we can see here already. We still know that our H is 2, so he has two horses. But what about our P and our C now? Well, we finally have a product here. Something times something has to be equal to a prime number. A prime number. Which factorization can we find for a prime number? Not so many. For example, for the 7, there is only 1 times 7 or 7 times 1. Because it is a prime number, there are no other factors. So for the right side, we only have the possibility of 1 times p or p times 1 because this is a prime number and there are no other ways to write a prime number as a product. For the left side in our product here, this means we only have these two possibilities. So either we have 1 times p here or p times 1. So let's compare then either c minus 10 equals 1 or the other possibility that c plus 12 equals 1. Let's write these equations down. So either c minus 10 equals 1 or, as my second possibility, c plus 12 equals 1. Let's solve for c and let's see what is possible for my c. So, if I solve for c now and I add 10 on both sides of the equation, I get c equals 11. It's possible. It's a prime number. Maybe we get our second result here. Let's see if we solve for c here by subtracting 12 on both sides of the equation. Then we get a result for c of 1 minus 12, which equals negative 11. No, <laughs> this is not a re second result. This is not a prime number. It's even negative, so we don't have negative 11 cows. Um, so this doesn't work. That was this possibility doesn't work. So we know C is 11. He has 11 cows. So we can insert 11 for our C here and our C here and find out how many pigs he has. 11 minus 10 equals 1 times 11 plus 12 equals 23. So he has how many pigs? 1 times 23, 23 pigs in total. And we solved this puzzle. I'm curious how you solved it, so please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!